Scientific Advances in World War One. The Great War was a period of great advances in scientific knowledge. There were obvious advances that aided the war effort, like the chemical warfare that led to the use of phosphian and mustard gas, and improvements in firearms and transport. But there are also developments in science and technology that began at that time, which have helped to make our lives better today. Synthetic rubber. At the beginning of the conflict in 1914, the Allied troops created a blockade that effectively cut off the supply of natural rubber from Southeast Asia to Germany. This led to Germans getting creative and the pharmaceutical division of Bayer, who had been researching rubber alternatives since 1910, developed a method of making synthetic substitute from lime and coal and called it methyl rubber. It wasn't perfect, and it was only soft when warm. Overnight drops in temperature led to flat spots on the tyres, which meant a bumpy ride for occupants in the vehicles. In spite of this, the thousands of tonnes of rubber substitute kept the German army on the move, and kept set in motion the huge industry that now supplies the majority of the rubber needs of the world. Communications even before 1914, significant progress had been made in the field of communication, but wartime saw the fine-tuning of new technologies. Both military and diplomatic communications were widely used and were vital in relaying messages between the different points on the front line, as well as between the different army units during manoeuvres. At the start of the war, radios were so big that the smallest mobile system took up space in two wooden chests. The whole lot needed three mules to carry it. During the war, improvement meant that the radio equipment could be made smaller and lighter, as well as being better at filtering out static, so the reception was much clearer. By 1918, the advances in the manufacture of vacuum tubes or valves opened up the development of smaller receivers and more powerful transmitters. Today, we see the benefits of this in accessible radio signals on the move and obviously mobile phones. Ultrasound and sonar One major threat that emerged during World War I was the submarine. German U-boats are thought to have sunk around 5,000 Allied merchant ships, while depth charges were developed to attack them. A big issue was how to detect these submarines in the first place. There was limited success with directional underwater microphones, called hydrophones, but this only worked if the submarines made a noise. The British Navy had an anti-submarine division, which developed equipment that could be used for underwater echo ranging, using a prototype called the ASDIC. It had been a quartz resonator and produced series of pulses which could be picked up by microphones. The delay between the pulse and the echo indicated how far the underwater object was. This technology developed into sonar, which has been a vital role in subsequent conflicts, but has also given rise to medical ultrasound imaging and ultrasound therapy. Surgery the two really major medical practices that emerged because of the events of World War I was the use of blood banks and the field of reconstructed surgery and prosthetics. When the sailor Walter Yeo lost his eyelids in the Battle of Jutland, New Zealand surgeon Harold Giles carried out a new type of skin graft. He used swinging flaps of skin from the undamaged areas to build up Walter's eyelids. Giles went on to persuade the British Army Medical Corps to dedicate an entire hospital in Kent to be used for facial reconstruction. His patients were war casualties, mainly with facial damage from gunshot wounds, and there was more than 5,000 patients treated there. Plastic surgery is now a multi-billion pound industry, but it had a humble and life-changing origins. Although blood transfusions have been performed since before the war, these tend to be directly from donor to recipient. This was mainly because there was no way of storing the blood. As doctors were aware of the need to match blood type, many wounded soldiers were dying because a suitable donor match could not be found in time. Paint and Ruse worked at Rockefeller Institute in New York and researched ways of preserving fresh 
fresh blood. He found that a salt solution mixed with the sodium citrate prevented the blood from clotting and added dectrose as a source of energy. In 1917, Captain Oswald Roberts took the new solution to Belgium, where the US Army Medical Corps had soldiers willing to donate. The flasks of blood could be stored in portable ice shelves for up to four weeks. The stored blood was used in battlefield surgery and saved many lives. It also paved the way for modern, for modern blood storage techniques and worldwide blood banks. Sanitary napkins for women. Celacotin, which is a byproduct of sugarcane processing, was first developed during the war for use of field bandages. They were more absorbent and abundant, resulting in them being cheaper than surgical cotton. Some field nurses saw the benefit of them as disposable sanitary napkins and a new industry was born, freeing women from the monthly misery of the reusable pads.